All right, guys. So welcome to the session, and I hope all of you guys are doing good. So let's get started with today's discussion. Today we are going to talk about introduction to machine learning, and at the same time we'll try to understand what all different types of machine learnings which we have. So let's get started. So machine learning is a way of teaching computers to make decisions or predictions based on the data. Instead of giving exact instructions, we show the computer examples like students' past grades and study habits to help it find patterns. This is one of the examples which we are discussing. Suppose I want to find the patterns about the marks, right? So you can see that once learn once it learns from these patterns, it can predict things like students' future scores. based on similar information it is like giving the computer experience so that it gets better at guessing outcomes without us telling in every details it's something like this for example if you see this data set we as a human will understand this data and try to understand the patterns and from this what we understood we understood that people who are having you can see right what we are seeing from this data the green one when the study hours is more and playing hours is less and sleeping hours is decent in that case they are getting good marks when the playing hour is more study hour is less and sleeping hour is also less so in that case they are more into getting into lesser marks and that is what the pattern which we are seeing and from that this is the new data set which we are getting and i want to predict what marks this particular student will get so you can see that study study hour is decent playing game is lesser sleeping hour is also decent so i am expecting around 80 to 95 that is the range so the prediction is coming out to be around 90 plus marks which this particular student will get so from this particular green data is nothing but my training data set and i am trying to find the pattern from that training data set and the orange data is like a new student and i want to know his marks so i am going to pass on this information to get the prediction of the marks so in place of human as a learner i will replace this learner to a machine and machine will learn from this data set and once machine will learn from this data set the orange data which is the new data i can pass it in the machine and machine will predict the outcome so that is how it works that is how it basically works how machine learning works this is the brief understanding of it how it works you must have heard various terminologies about the data world right what is data science what is artificial intelligence what is machine learning what is deep learning and what is data analysis so here you can see a quick tabular format which will help you understand about the differences between these terminologies so if i talk about the data science an interdisciplinary field focused on extracting insights from data using statistical and computational techniques the purpose is to solve complex problems and make data driven decisions the techniques which we are using is statistical technique machine learning technique data visualizations and data wrangling techniques the examples are predicting customer behavior improving business processes and so on if i talk about the artificial intelligence a branch of computer science that aims to create systems capable of performing tasks that normally require human intelligence the purpose is to simulate human intelligence in machines techniques which we are using is rule based systems machine learning and neural networks examples are chatbots voice assistants and image recognition if we talk about the machine learning a subset of ai that focuses on algorithms allowing computers to learn from data and improve over time the purpose is to make predictions or decisions without being explicitly programmed supervised machine learning unsupervised machine learning and reinforced machine le reinforcement machine learning are some of the techniques which we are using example applications are predicting stock prices recommendation systems 
same way for deep learning as well a subset of machine learning that uses neural network with multiple layers to model complex patterns in larger data sets the purpose is to solve highly complex tasks that require understanding data hierarchies techniques which we are using are convolutional neural networks recurrent neural networks examples are self driving cars facial recognition and language translation we have the data analysis the process of examining cleaning transforming and modeling data to discover useful information the purpose is to interpret data and find insights for decision making techniques which we are using is descriptive statistics visualizations trend analysis example usage is like sales analysis trend identification report generation these are some of the use cases there are various applications of machine learning which we have the first one is obviously spam email filtering these are some of the examples you can think of examples in your use case in your industry as well so spam filtering machine learning helps email systems automatically filter out spam emails so your inbox only shows relevant messages product recommendations when you shop online machine learning analyzes what you have viewed or purchased to suggest similar items you might like voice assistants assistants like siri uh, siri or alexa use machine learning to understand your voice commands and respond with helpful information social media feeds machine learning personalizes your feed on apps like facebook or instagram by showing your posts based on what you like or interact with fraud detection banks use application um, bank use machine learning to detect unusual transactions on your accounts helping to pre prevent credit card frauds predictive texts when you type on your phone machine learning predicts the next word making typing faster and more accurate self driving cars machine learning enables self driving cars to recognize objects like other vehicles pedestrians and road signs for safe navigation healthcare diagnosis machine learning helps doctors diagnose diseases by analyzing medical images lab results and patient histories customer support chatbots many websites use chatbots powered by machine learning to answer questions providing quick support without human assistance so these are some of the use cases you can think of and there are various different use cases which we can think of as well this is the machine learning pipeline which we have how the machine learning entire project works how the pipeline will be so first of all i have to define the problem statement what is the problem statement which i have to solve using machine learning for example let's say i want to predict whether my customer will purchase the product or not so that is my problem statement once i have that problem state with statement with me i will have to gather the information which are relevant for me to pre predict this so i'll go ahead and i will gather the information for that all the etl concepts and various different data engineering concepts will be applied to get gather the proper information once the data is there i will have to explore and clean the data because once you are gathering the information there will be a higher chances that your data may be not clean there will be some outliers there will be some missing values some of the treatment which you have to do once that is done after that we will define the machine learning task we will create the algorithm we will choose the final algorithm which is important which is going to give me a good predictions so we'll choose suitable machine learning methods we can go with normal traditional machine learning models or we can go with ai models as well once i will choose the model i will i will build and train the model train the machine learning model and i will go ahead and i will evaluate the model as well once i am satisfied with the predictions which machine is passing machine is giving i will finalize that model and i will go ahead and i will deploy the model in the production environment that means i am going to pass on the information and in future it is going to give me the predicted values so that is your entire machine learning pipeline which we have there are various types of machine learning we have one is supervised machine learning unsupervised machine learning we have semi supervised machine learning 
and at the same time we have reinforcement machine learning as well in this particular session we are going to talk about supervised and unsupervised machine learning technique now what is the supervised machine learning technique let's use an example of a student data to explain the supervised machine learning for both classification and regression so basically machine learning which is a supervised machine learning technique is further divided into two parts one is known as regression and second is known as classification so we'll try to understand that first of all we'll talk about the classification problem statement in classification the goal is for the computer to learn how to categorize students into groups or classes based on certain information for example suppose a school wants to predict if a student will pass or fail at the end of the semester based on factors like study hours per week attendance rate participation in class these are certain features based on that i want to go ahead and i want to predict whether my particular student will pass or fail so how it works here first one is the data which you are going to get is a labeled data we give the computer data about many students including their study hours attendance and participation along with whether they passed or failed basically i am going to provide the information to the machine based on my part past data for example let's say this school is 5 year old school there are many learners they came over the period of time so i have that information with me that which learner studied how many hours what was the attendance and so on and whether he passed or failed so that information i am going to pass it to the machine so that machine will learn from that machine will understand the pattern from that step 2 is learning patterns the computer studies this labeled data and finds pattern for example it may notice that students who study more and have higher attendance are more likely to pass step number 3 predicting classes after learning the computer can now look at a new student's study habits attendance and participation data and predict whether this student is likely to pass or fail this is classification because we are predicting a category either pass or fail basically we are classifying the information whether the student will pass or fail second example is regression in regression the goal is to predict a continuous variable like a score or a number based on the past data example scenario let's say school wants to predict a student's exact exam score based on data like number of hours spent studying number of assignments completed mid term exam score so based on that i want to predict whether how much marks the learner will get in the exam again this data is a labeled data we give the computer data for many students including hours spent studying assignments completed mid term scores and their final exam score that is the label step 2 learning patterns the computer looks for patterns in this data for example it might learn that students who studied more and had higher mid term scores tend to get better final scores predicting scores after learning the computer can now take a new students study hours assignments completed and mid term scores and predict their final exam score this is a regression because we are predicting a specific number the students final score in summary supervised learning with students data can help predict categories like pass slash fail for classification or numbers like exact scores for regression by learning from past labeled data before i go ahead and talk about that i'll quickly write a mathematical equation as well so that you will understand so whenever i want to predict for classification i will have certain data set let's say dn which consists of xi and yi where xi is nothing but your independent variable and yi is nothing but your dependent variable
such that xi belongs to the real valued number and yi belongs to 0 and 1 where 0 means he is failing the exam and 1 means he is passing the exam so this is the equation for your classification it's a two class classification because we are classifying either fail or pass i can have multi class classification as well where i have multiple classes same way for regression i have a data set dn i have x i and y i such that x i belongs to the real valued number and y i is also belonging to the real valued number where i am predicting a number the continuous number what is the exam score here i was not predicting the exam score here i was predicting whether the student will pass or fail so that is the difference between the equations which we have so here is the supervised machine learning pipeline which we have so i have a training data set which is i am going to use for machine to learn machine will learn from the training data set training the algorithm that is your machine learning model once i have this information with me i will validate whether things are fine or not that means i am checking the model which i have created is actually doing a good prediction or not that is what the validation data will do if it is not doing a good prediction i will go and i will improve the model and again i will go and i will check the accuracy whether things are fine or not once this cycle will complete once i am very much sure that the model which i am creating is doing a good prediction i will use this particular model on the third set of data that is your testing data i'll test my model and i will check the accuracy if this is good because here in the validation data the accuracy is coming good now in the testing data also the accuracy is coming good in that case the model is fine because it's like a second opinion type of concept so i am trying to understand whether things are fine yes it is then i will deploy that to the production environment and it will help me to do the prediction for the unseen data points that means a new student comes in i want to predict his score i can very well do that let's try to understand how we can get the data so here you can see that as i mentioned my school is for last 5 years running for last 5 years i have certain information with me where i already aware what is the student id what is the r he studied or she studied what is how many assignments he or she completed what is the mid term score and what is the final score i have this information with me this is for last past students now what i am doing is i am dividing this data into three parts this is my first part which is known as training data which consists of the majority of chunk so majority of the chunk of data which i am giving to machine where machine will learn from that particular data set now this particular data set machine will use for training purpose machine will get trained from this data after that once my model is ready i will use this validation data where i will only pass this information i will only pass this information in the model i am not going to pass this information i will just pass this information my model will give me some numbers if these numbers are very much near to these numbers that means my model is doing good because what is this this is the model which you are predicting the score and this is the actual score if the difference between actual score and the predicted score is less in that case my model is doing good but if the actual score and the predicted score the difference is more in that case your model is not performing well right so that is the idea here also i will use this validation data to check how the model which you have trained using this data set is responding if the error is coming less we are good then i will pass another data set which is the testing data set 
in the model again to predict the scores. If the testing data set is also doing good, that means the difference between actual and the predicted is good. Then in that case, we are good. I can say that my model is ready and I can very well deploy that model in the production environment. And in the production environment, you will get this type of data set where I am not aware of the marks because that is the task of the model to predict what marks this particular student will get. This is my independent variable and this is my dependent variable which is dependent on these factors which you can see here. Independent variable normally we denote it as X which I have denoted in this equation as well X and the dependent variable is denoted by Y where I have denoted in this equation as well as Y. It is known as supervised machine learning technique because I have these scores which I can use for supervise the model which you have trained on this data set. That is why this is known as supervised machine learning technique. This particular example is for regression because my interest is to predict a continuous number. Here my interest is not to predict any classes. If I want to predict the classes, this is one of the examples which you have where you can see that I have again the data set based on the study hours, based on the attendance rate and based on the class participation. I am predicting basically I have the data where learners passed or failed. This is my past data which I will pass again in the machine. This information is considered to be a training data set where machine will get trained on this data set. Once that is done, once my model is ready, I will pass on this information which is these two records in the model and model will predict whether it is pass or fail. Let's say for first record it is passing, for second also it is passing. But actually here for the first record it was failing and second it is passing. So I can say that my accuracy is 50% because out of two records one is wrongly predicted, one is correctly predicted. So that is how we can check the accuracy in this. In the regression I was checking the accuracy by using the difference between the actual value and the predicted value. But in this classification I am just checking if you are saying pass and model is saying if the data is passed and model is saying fail, that means it's a wrong prediction. Same way if the model is or if the data is fail and model is saying pass, it's a wrong prediction. If the actual is fail and model is saying fail, it is correct prediction. Actual is pass and model is also pass is also correct prediction. So that is how it works. Once I have done with this validation data, I will use the testing data as well for the second opinion for me whether things are fine or not. If not, again, I have to train the model again, right? We have to choose some other model, all those things. Again, it's a cycle which we have to perform. But let's say that testing data is also giving me a good prediction. In that case, I will finalize the model and I will deploy the model in the production. And then the new records will be coming in where based on their R study, based on the attendance rate and based on the class participation, I want to predict whether this particular student will pass or fail, right? So that is how your classification works. That is how the supervised machine learning works. Here are certain examples for regression which we have. We can use again this these examples which I am going to talk about is basically for the banking industry. So same way for other industries as well, you can think about what all use case you can create for that particular industry. So here you can see. Predicting loan amounts. Banks use regression to predict the loan amount a customer might need based on their income, spending patterns and credit score. This helps banks offer loan amounts that fit each customer's financial uh, profile. Right. Now same way if I go to the second example. Estimating credit card spending. Where I want to estimate what is the credit card spend, regression can help predict how much a customer is likely to spend on their credit card each month based on their past spending, income and lifestyle factors. This prediction helps banks manage credit card limits and detect unusual spending patterns. One more example forecasting interest rates. Banks use regression to forecast future interest rates 
by analyzing historical rates, economic indicators, and inflation data. Accurate predictions help banks set competitive rates and make better, business, better lending decisions. Customer predict, uh, predicting customer lifetime value. So regression helps banks estimate how much revenue a customer will generate over their entire relationship with the bank. By analyzing factors like account balance, transaction frequency, and product usage, banks can identify high value customers and tailor their services accordingly. Assessing risk or a default risk. Banks use regression to predict the likelihood that a customer will default on a loan. Factors like debt to income ratio, payment history, and employment status are analyzed to estimate default risk, helping banks make a safe, safer lending decisions. So everywhere I am predicting a real valued number. What is the total risk amount? What is the customer lifetime value? What is the interest rate? What is the credit card spending? And what is the loan amounts? All are what we are predicting a real valued number. Same way for classification. Now here we are going to predict whether something will happen or not. Yes or no type of concept. First one is loan approval. Classification helps banks decide whether to approve or reject a loan application by categorizing applicants as either approved or rejected. Factors like income, credit score, employment status and debt to income ratio are analyzed to determine if an applicant meets the bank's criteria. If it is not meeting the bank's criteria, I will reject the loan. Fraud detection. Fraud detection banks use classification to identify potentially fraudulent transactions by labeling them as fraud or not fraud. By analyzing factors like transaction amount, location and spending behavior, the system can detect unusual activities and flag suspicious transactions for review. So here also whether the transaction is fraud or not is what I'm trying to predict, which is again a part of classification. Credit card segmentation customer uh, banks uses classification to group credit card customers into categories like high risk, medium risk and low risk. So here I have three categories. That means this is no longer a binary classification. This is becoming a multi class classification because now we are having three classes. Okay. So low risk based on their spending habits payment history and credit score. This helps banks tailor services and credit limits for different customer types. Customer churn prediction, whether my customer will leave my company or not. For example, let's say I'm using Airtel SIM card and if I am shifting from Airtel to Geo, so in that case, it is a churn for Airtel. I as a customer of Airtel, now no longer using Airtel SIM card, I'm using Geo's connection. So classification helps banks predict if a customer is likely to leave or churn or stay. By analyzing factors like account usage, customer satisfaction and engagement levels, banks can label customers as likely to churn or likely to stay and take proactive measures to retain them. Loan delinquency prediction. Classification is used to identify borrowers who are likely to default or likely to repay their loans. Banks analyze borrower characteristics like payment history, income stability, and credit score to assess the risk of late or missed payments. So I'll predict whether my customer will pay the bank loan or not, EMI or not basically. Now next is unsupervised machine learning technique. So till this point we have discussed the supervised and also we have seen that in the supervised we have two major classes. One is regression and second is classification. Now next is unsupervised machine learning technique. So one of the techniques in unsupervised is known as clustering. So in clustering the goal is for computer to learn how to group students into clusters based on similarities without any predefined labels. So the biggest difference why it is known as unsupervised machine learning technique is that in this particular data set, I will not have the Y. 
if you remember we have discussed that there are two main data one is independent variable and dependent variable in the unsupervised machine learning technique you will not have this dependent variable and as we don't have the dependent variable there is no point splitting into training and testing at the same time there is no point like i cannot compare what my model trained on whether it is performing good on this data set or not because there is no why for me and as there is and if there is no why for me there is no point of comparing there is no point of checking the accuracy so that is the reason this is known as unsupervised way of machine learning where i cannot go ahead and i cannot uh, what do you say predict or i can say i cannot compare the prediction right i cannot check the accuracy so in clustering the goal is to come uh, goal is for the goal is for the computers to learn how to group students into clusters based on similarities without any predefined labels example scenario suppose a school wants to understand different types of students based on their study habits attendance and class participation but they don't know in advance what the groups should look like now how it works first of all the data which you are going to have is a unlabeled data there is no label in that so we give the computer data about many students including details like study hours attendance rate and participation but without any labels or groups specified like we will not have something like pass or fail we are not having that information finding similarities the computer analyzes this data to find patterns and similarities among students it might notice for instance that some students have high study hours and high participation while other students have low attendance but moderate participation creating clusters based on these patterns computer groups the students into clusters one cluster might consist of high achievers with high study hours and participation another of occasional participants with moderate study hours and attendance and other are like low engagement students with low attendance and low study hours so that is how we are segregating the learners and what is the benefit the benefit is that if i know that there are low achievers or low engagement learners i can focus more on them those who are very much high achievers i can think about that okay they are doing good so let me spend some more time on the students who are less achievers this is clustering because we are not predicting a label instead we are discovering naturally occurring groups or clusters within the data this helps the student understand different student types and tailor interventions or support strategies based on each clusters characteristics again okay, here is the pipeline for your unsupervised machine learning data here there is nothing like validation data there is nothing like uh, testing data we have just the training data on which machine will learn and machine will understand and that 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 is it i'll deploy the model and in the unseen data set it will create the clusters based on the features of that particular student here you can see the sample data set where i want to predict the clusters which cluster they are belonging to based on their gender based on their marital status based on their income based on their age based on their expenditure i want to create a cluster that means people are of same type will be like a one type of customers and people are of another same type will be of another type of clusters for example let's say i am having two features one is spending score and second is salary these are certain type of uh, certain type of uh, customers these are certain type of customers these are certain type of customers these are certain type of customers and these are certain type of customers so what we are understanding from here we are understanding that these are the customers who are like low spending score and low salary same way these are the customers with high spending score and low salary these are the customers with average spending score and average salary these are the customers with low spending score and high salary 
and same way these are the customer with high spending score and high salary so these are the five clusters which we have created now suppose let's say i am coming up with very expensive product and i want to basically target those customers who are more likely to buy so out of these five clusters i know that cluster number 4 they are the people who are having higher chances to purchase the product the reason is their spending score is higher and their salary is also higher so i can target these customers the probability of converting these customers who are going to purchase that expensive product is very high so rather than me marketing all the customers i will try to market these customers first after that let's say i have some more funds for marketing then in that case i will try to target these customers as well because their spending score is higher their salary is lesser but spending score is still higher so i can very well target these two types of customers and save my marketing cost because rather than me marketing all the customers i am just targeting those customers who are very much going to purchase the product right so that is how the cluster will help me to do the or that is how the clustering will help now here are certain examples where we can use clustering technique first one is customer segmentation where i am segregating the customers for example if you are using the cards right credit cards so they get a you get a call that you are a platinum customer you have this offer and something like that so they are segregating you so banks use clustering to group customers into segments based on behavior such as spending patterns saving habits and product usage this helps banks understand different customer types example frequent savers big spenders and offer personalized products or services second is branch location optimization clustering is used to analyze customer distribution and transaction locations to identify ideal spots for new branches or atms by clustering customers based on geographical areas with high banking activity banks can strategically expand to serve customers better for example let's say i am i am the customer of hdfc bank and in my locality the hdfc bank is not there for example same way like me there are various other customers as well who are the customers of hdfc bank and they are also uh, basically living in the same area where i am staying now there the bank is not there but yes there are other banks available i am going to access the atms of other banks and from that hdfc will get to know that there are many customers who are at this particular location and they are using this particular bank's atm machine so why not we will go ahead and we will open up a machine there as well so that type of strategy we can come up with and based on that new location or new machine will be installed so that is the second example same way identifying high risk accounts banks can use clustering to identify groups of accounts with similar risk levels for instance clustering accounts based on factors like transaction frequency account balance and credit score can help identify high risk clusters that may need closer monitoring so that is again one more use case which we can have and again all the use cases which i am talking about is coming from the finance or banking background product recommendation clustering helps banks group customers based on similar needs and preferences for example customers who frequently travel abroad might be clustered together and offer international credit cards or travel insurance products tailored to their interests detecting anomalous transactions in fraud detection clustering is used to find unusual transaction patterns by grouping typical transactions transactions that don't fit into any common cluster they appear unusual they may be flagged for further investigation as potential fraud that is about your unsupervised way of machine learning technique so these are the various use cases which we have where we can apply the machine learning technique as we discussed as well there are multiple types of machine learning one is supervised machine learning technique and second is unsupervised machine learning technique 
the idea is that you have to go ahead and you have to break the data into x and y if there is a dependent variable then it is falling in the supervised machine learning technique if there is no dependent variable that is falling in the unsupervised way of machine learning technique in the supervised way of machine learning technique we are having two major categories one is regression and second is the classification in the regression we have to predict the continuous number your uh, y will be a continuous number like house price car price youtube likes and so on based on certain factors suppose i want to predict the house price based on what is the area of the house what is the distance from the city how many rooms are there and so on so forth based on that we will predict the house price so that is a regression example for us second is classification suppose i want to know whether the employee will leave the company or not based on again certain factors like salary experience bonus and so on i want to predict whether that particular customer will leave or not so that is your classification technique where i am going to pass the entire past data i'll break the data into x and y plus into train validation and test data i will use the training data set to train the model validation data set to check the accuracy of the model and then the testing data set as well something like a second opinion to test the accuracy of the model once we are good i will go ahead and i will deploy the model in the production environment and in future if new uh, information comes in i can very well predict the information based on the model which i have trained same way for classification as well i have the data i will split into x and y train test validation and do the same process in the clustering there is no concept of y i only have the x so i cannot split into train test validation because i i don't have y and as i don't have y i cannot check whether the model is performing good or not there are various methods available like silhouette score or dun index which basically helping me to check the accuracy of the clusters which i am creating but directly through the data the way we were doing in the regression and the classification we cannot do that in the clustering because there is no y for us so that is why it is known as unsupervised machine learning technique one of the techniques which we have discussed is clustering technique which is basically helping me to group my customers group my students group my patients whatever the information we have i want to group them based on certain similarities there are mathematical formulas like euclidean distance or manhattan distance which can help me to calculate the similarities between the various customers or patients or whatever information we are dealing with and once the uh, i'll create a cluster i can use it for various usages the example which i talked about is for example marketing i want to market the customer based on their spending score and salary and the product is expensive so in that case i will try to market those customers who are basically having high spending score and high salary or low spending score and high, uh, high sorry high spending score and low salary and high spending score and high salary because they are having a higher spending score so if the product is expensive there is a higher chances that they may purchase the product so that is how we can apply the clustering as well so these are the two major techniques which you are going to use classification regression and clustering if i combine all this around 90% of the problem statement we are getting on these type of use cases so that is what the machine learning is all about now it's last 15 minutes any doubts you have let me know any queries any doubts you can put on the chat and we can have a discussion on the same as of now in this session we have discussed about what is supervised unsupervised what is regression classification there are various algorithms are available which is again we have to learn we have to understand the mathematical part of it how the algorithm is working how the calculations are happening and at the same time how the entire model is getting trained so any doubts any queries you can ping me on chat
do we need to learn machine do we need to learn statistics in depth to learn machine learning yes if you want to learn machine learning then we have to learn stats as well we see the charts now i was not seeing that let me take the question here so based on this what is the relationship between all of these concepts or all, all are interrelated you can say that data science is like a big umbrella inside that all these concepts are coming in how do we handle missing value during the model training so there are various techniques like there are simple techniques mean median mode there are some algorithmic techniques also available for example k nearest neighbor i can apply those before creating the model so ml is basically implemented for prediction yes machine learning is we are using for prediction purpose how about the accuracy of the model it depends on which type of model you are running if you are running the regression model then there are various ways to check the accuracy for example r square adjusted r square mean squared error root mean squared error mean absolute error mean absolute percentage error so these errors should be less r square value should be higher if you are using classification then there are other matrices available to check the accuracy like confusion matrix we have precision recall we have roc we have log loss so these are some of the use some of the ways to check the accuracy of the model same way for the unsupervised like clustering we have siloid score and dun index which can help me to check the accuracy of the model so based on which type of model you are implementing you have to go and you have to decide which type of accuracy measure you will choose how accurate are these ml models or uh, and if the error is high how do we how do we do error check if the accuracy is not good that means there is error in that case you have to fine tune the hyperparameters there is a concept of hyperparameters which for every algorithm there is a hyperparameter and you have to fine tune that so for that you have to apply k fold cross validation technique there are various other techniques which will help you to improve the hyperparameters and that will fine tune your model can we have the same model for different set of yes you can have the same model for a different set of data sets if the accuracy is coming good there can be higher chances as well that uh, you may be using different model for different data set in unsupervised machine learning basically figuring out why a group does something in unsupervised machine learning we have to create a group with the same type of people for example i have people with low experience and low salary so i have that as one type of employees now if i want to do the increment of my employees so i may think of giving the increment to those employees who are having low salary and low experience something like that basically the idea is that create a group and based on that go ahead and take the actions how to explore the best suitable model for a specific use case that is purely based on the requirement there are requirements in the industry where for example let's say i was working with one of the companies so they were looking for a faster model response that means they are not looking for the accuracy they are looking for that once i am passing any information the output should come faster so that is nothing but low latency system some client ask for better accuracy and they are not very much looking for the faster response so that is again one of the use case so there is a thin line difference between that there is a what do you say uh, i want to i want to go ahead and i want to find the requirement from the business what they are looking for and based on that we have to finalize the model if they are looking for a faster response in that case accuracy will compromise if they are looking for good accuracy the response time will compromise so that depends what is the requirement based on that we have to finalize the model is there any separate session for learning those algorithms for classification regression we can schedule that we can check with the supporting for the same 
any template models framework available so that any particular scenario can apply it on that to achieve the ml goal there is no template there are certain steps which you have to perform and once you are performing those steps you can get the prediction loan prediction model is same can be used to various type of loans with different parameters yes model can be used but again you have to retrain your model that means suppose you are training a model for house loans exactly the same model you cannot use for the car loans you have to retrain the model with the car information and then you can use that okay. so training data will change you can use for example let's say linear regression so the model name is linear regression but on which data are you training suppose you are training on so in that case your model is specifically for house loans if you want to do for car loans then you have to retrain your linear regression model on the car loans data then you can use that how do we identify which clustering we need to use for example k means when and where it can be applied see k means hierarchical db scan there are um, c means there are various algorithms are available k means is much faster than these algorithms so if i am looking for a faster responses i can very well go with k means if there are lot of outliers in that case we can think of db scan type of clustering if we are looking forward for the what is a percentage type of clustering for example there is a point i want to know whether this belongs to this cluster or that cluster so i it will give me the outcome in a percentage that okay this particular point belongs to that cluster 90% and this cluster 10% so that is a clustering type of sorry percentage type of clustering so then in that case we can use c means clustering so that depends purely based on what is the requirement and k means is quite heavily used and that gives a good response as well tools like tableau power bi they are also using k means so that depends what type of requirement you have based on that you can decide so i see all the questions i have responded any other questions you have let me know ppt i will share with the support team they will share it with you guys All right, so that is what we have. We'll see you in the next session. Till then, take care, guys.